But I, something I noticed is, you know, a lot of people who live in countries where they have no struggles in terms of uh, technological advancement, in terms of materialism, in terms of infrastructure, they have beautiful infrastructure. Baby, you can call me a superman. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And you got Fanny Lungo. And we are Fanny, Fanny and Jesse. Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction. But before we get into the reaction, guys, we wanna thank everybody out there who's been subscribing to our channel. You're the biggest MVP. And also we wanna thank the people who've been giving us reaction videos. Thank you so much. And the people who've been able to give us um, positive comments. We also want to thank you so so much and the most important thing guys we uh, we have another channel which is called funny and jesse 2.0 feel free to just go and subscribe the link is going to be down below in the description or it's going to be on the uh on the on the comment section we're going to pin the the link down there just make sure to go and hit the link and subscribe and for this channel right here if you're new we are funny and jesse we do reaction videos um a lot of reaction videos any type of reaction videos if you feel like you want to give us any reaction videos just let us in the comment section below and we're gonna do it for you so right about now this video was suggested by not many people it's just a few people but we felt the need of let's just go and react to this video and they suggested that we should go react to what is it about nigeria and or west africa etc by moved Menk. moved Menk is a um, Mufti, sorry, Mufti Menk is from Zimbabwe and I think he's a he's a what probably he's, he's well known for for helping and you know just helping the people and stuff like that yeah and also he's a uh, he's Islam is he? Hmm? is he? yeah I thought someone once said in the comments that he wasn't is Islam, I think. So, without any further ado, let's get it. Are you sure? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, you might be surprised as to why I'm wearing this. Let me explain to you. This is from Nigeria, the northern part of Nigeria, mashallah. I think it's actually originally from a place called Medugui. And then they make it in various other places as well. This was made to fit me, mashallah. So even what I'm wearing is absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. I really love it. It's very, very comfortable. I want to tell you something. I've traveled to many, many places. Thanks to Allah. Every place has its uniqueness. Every place has a good side to it. Every place has something great. Every place has been blessed by Allah in its own unique way. But I want to tell you, we have perceptions of places that at times are so, so wrong. You know, when people talk of Nigeria, the first thing that comes to the minds of a lot of the people is uh, perhaps uh, corruption, uh, maybe crooks, maybe people think that, you know, your stuff is going to go missing, scams and so on. When we talk of West Africa, to a certain extent, that is also the perception in the minds of some, a lot in fact. When we talk of, uh, generally when we talk of Africa, you know, we have this perception, people have this perception, not me. But when I've traveled, I've actually come across some really amazing people in these countries that sometimes people told me not to go to, and they say, don't go to that area. And I think to myself, but there are people in that area, I'm sure they are lovely. I've been to Kano, people told me don't go there. I've been to Katsina, people said don't go there. This is in Nigeria. I've been to Meiduguri, people said don't go there. And I've been to many other places. I've been to the Gambia, I've been to uh, a lot of West Africa, subhanAllah, some amazing, amazing countries. And some of the people are lovely. I've been to Uganda lately. And I promise you, amazing people with lovely hearts. And each one is trying, each one has their own struggles. But I, something I noticed is, you know, a lot of people who live in countries where they have no struggles in terms of uh, technological advancement, in terms of materialism, in terms of infrastructure, they have beautiful infrastructure. Uh, those people who live in such countries, either first world countries or generally third world countries that are a little bit more advanced, 
You know what? Sometimes they are lacking in very, very important things. Sometimes I believe that the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I've witnessed with my own eyes, the sacrifice that the children, the parents, and everybody else makes generally, not everyone, but generally, the norm, the, the majority, is amazing. You know, I, I, I can't begin to explain to you how exactly I feel at times. I want to cry when I see people who are so dedicated to their faith. And I think that here we are, I mean, I'm living in Zimbabwe. Yes, we go through a lot of struggles, but it's, it's, it's still a lovely life. I mean, mashallah, we, we have a lot, you know, today, mashallah, we have electricity suddenly for some reason, and it's, it's quite strange, but alhamdulillah, it's there. And I thank Allah. But my brothers and sisters, look at the sacrifices of others. I was amazed by my reflection upon a hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he said that, you know, regarding worldly matters, look at those who have less than you. And regarding religious matters, look at those who have more than you. <laughs> you know what? When I looked at that hadith, I told myself, look at some parts of West Africa, subhanAllah. They have less materially and they have much more religiously. And I'm not joking. Some of these people are absolutely amazing. You know, when you see the masjids full for Salat al-Fajr, when you see, for example, people dressed in, in such a way that for them to cover is, is, is so exciting, more exciting than to reveal. And I always say that, you know, when a person wants to show everything, yeah, that's, it's their life. But at the end of the day, when, when covering makes you, uh, you know, uh, liberates you, makes you feel that that's what you want, you know. It, it depicts a relationship with Allah. It depicts a, a, a close relationship, closer relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not judging people, but generally uh, that's what it is. You know, uh, people say don't dress provocatively or in an immoral way. Different cultures translate that in a different way. As Muslims, we believe that, you know what, when we say modest and moral, uh, we actually have a very high standard. So, it's, it's, it's your relationship with Allah, it's your journey with your Maker. But at the end of the day, you will recognize that you need to do more. I need to do more. You know, when I sit and, and, and I tell myself, this is how much Quran I read a day, this is how much I fast voluntarily, this is how much I... And then I compare it with some of the, the poorest of the poor, who get up at 3 in the morning, the children are learning, not by... They're learning by, by fire. They don't even have candles. They just light a little fire. They share in the Qur'ans. They actually uh, memorize much more than just the Qur'an. They memorize books of, uh, you know, Tajweed, Shatabiyya, so many other books of recitation of the Qur'an and fiqh, jurisprudence and Islamic uh, literature. And they try to educate themselves. They sacrifice three in the morning. And then they, they're all there for tahajjud. They're all there for salat al-fajr. And this happens not once, once in a lifetime, once in a week. It happens every single day. When you're told that, you know, in this community, most of the people get up for um, uh, Salat al-Tahajjid and most of them fast on a Monday and a Thursday and you start feeling, you know, who am I? I've got a car, I've got a house, I've got, I've got a family, I've, you know, mashallah, we, uh, we might not be wealthy, but alhamdulillah, you know, we're, we're surviving in a much more comfortable way than them. And yet they are so close to Allah. And I tell myself recently, I even saw uh, a place where these guys are studying the Quran, subhanAllah, and their dedication is immaculate. Their recitation is better than most of us. And, and subhanAllah, uh, the way they, the way, the effort they put into it, and I'm thinking we are making an effort to earn money, to be able to live for the next few years and we don't even know when we're going to die. And they are making an effort to earn Jannah and those, which is absolutely eternal. And then I tell myself, I'm, you know, we need to strike a better balance than what we are. So, wallahi, it's amazing. By the way, some of you are asking me about this. Why is one side down and one side up? That is the way of wearing it. If anyone from here is from Nigeria, you can tell me. This is the way. So some people have this side down, this side up. Some people have this side down, this side up. Some people have both sides down. But basically, something has to be down here. And mashallah, it fits. You see, this one goes from ear to ear goes right to the back, mashallah, it's absolutely, it feels very comfortable, it's really nice, and the clothing as well is absolutely superb, this one's a little bit thick material for the winter here in Zimbabwe, I think tonight might be possibly 7, 10 degrees maybe, it's quite a cool night, mashallah, it, it did go a little bit lower, but mashallah, the point is, oh, there's a way of wearing this, you know, when you're following someone's uh, way, you rather do it properly, do it nicely, mashallah, so, subhanallah, 
my brothers and sisters, this was just an encouragement. The more you get in terms of wealth, in terms of qualification, in terms of material items, please turn to the Almighty. Don't, don't lose that link. Look at these others and tell yourself, oh, what I've got is temporary. What they're building is eternal. Is eternal. Oh, you who has the millions. Oh, you who has the billions. Oh, you who has a comfortable life in this world. What did you do to prepare for your hereafter? The moment your eyes close and you're going to be in that grave with the ants and the worms and everything else eating up your body such that in a short time it will have rotten back into the soil, decomposed. Sorry to use those words, but it's a reality. I'm not doing anyone. It's going to happen to me and to everyone else. What did you do to prepare for that day? At least seek the forgiveness of Allah. At least read a verse a day of the Quran. These people are reading much more. At least try and perfect your recitation, the understanding of the Quran. Develop your relationship with Allah. Your five salah, your father. People are asking us from modern countries, is it okay if I don't pray because I go to work? And these people from backward countries actually pray more than just the five prayers. They pray much more than that. So imagine, if your advancement is going to take you away from Allah, it is not advancement. It is actually stepping back. I looked at one of these areas, like a, a, a place called Katsina, and I was telling myself, if anyone cannot practice their deen wherever they are, let them come here, they can practice their deen with total freedom. SubhanAllah. But are we ready? No, we're not. Because why? It's not infrastructurally as better, as, as good as our country. And they go through struggles, they also have power cuts, they also, not too bad, they also have difficulties and hardship. But to be honest, thank Allah for what you have. Part of showing gratitude to Allah, seek the forgiveness of Allah and develop a better relationship with Him. I promise you, for every one person who has discarded their proper way of dressing, there are another 10 in Africa who have donned the proper way of dressing, without going into detail because each one's on a different level. When I see some of the countries in the Middle East, I'm actually ashamed by uh, some things that go on, and I'm embarrassed, should I say. People are asking me, what about this, what about that? Listen, I don't come from there, but I'm embarrassed because... You know what? There are people from a very, very poor community whom Allah has not blessed with much in terms of wealth, but He has actually blessed them with everything else. They even have greater contentment, greater happiness, greater joy and smiles, greater days of, you know, real excitement. But they have very little money, very little wealth. They are struggling. Their water is four kilometers away. Sometimes their, you know, their electricity is never there. They live with... Uh, not gas stoves, but you know, kerosene or paraffin stoves, as we call them. They light fires with firewood to cook their food and they eat basic, simple stuff. But my brothers and sisters, come on, thank you, my. don't turn away from the Almighty just because He blessed you, just because He granted you wealth, just because He granted you goodness and ease. Why are you turning away from it? Don't, don't. You want happiness? Come back to the Almighty. That factor will definitely bring about happiness. So, this, in a nutshell, is the reason why I really love these countries where people are very, very uh, backward materially, but very advanced in their relationship with Allah. Now, do you understand? So people say, when are you coming to America? When are you coming to Canada? When are you coming to here and there? Mashallah, I will, if Allah wills. But to be honest, if you invited me to a place like, uh, you know, one of the poorest countries of Africa, I think I would have an urge in my heart to visit that place before anywhere else. Why? Because that's what motivates me. That's what gives me a kick. That's what actually makes me feel like I'm not even a good Muslim. Because I think to myself, as good as you think you are, look at the small boy five years old, much more dedicated than you who think you're a big deal, you know. You want to travel here and then, no, 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 let's go to Africa. Let's go to the poorest country. Let's, you know, I, I, before I used to be slightly irritated when the water didn't come out of the tap and so on. Now, no way. I don't mind. I take my own little buckets and things and my own little, you know, uh, superfood <laughs> within my bags sometimes so that I can last four or five days without really, uh, you know, uh, eating and drinking from wherever I had to if there was no food and drink. I've got it in my little bag. SubhanAllah. I didn't wish to be like that before. But now I am. SubhanAllah. Amazing. So we are motivated by these people. I, am, I, I want to congratulate those who have dedicated part of their day at night to the deen of Allah. It has motivated me. It's made me, you know, when, I, when, I, when, when I'm fulfilling my salah, I, I started taking a little bit more time because I tell myself, nah, nah, I can do better than most guys, inshallah. I can do better. But the more advanced you become, you say, then I can leave my salah and I get back to work. And then there comes a time you say, I can't leave my salah because I have work. And I can't, I can't obey Allah because I need the pound and the dollar, whatever it may be. Relax, relax. Think about it. Take a step back. 
of the situation, dig deep and ponder. You die now, what's going to help you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us strengthen our relationship with Him. A lot of us are too much into games. Gaming has taken over. People are into movies. Unfortunately, people are into pornography. People are into sword. And you know what? These are people who've got their limbs and wealth and food and drink and they don't need to worry about where the next meal is going to come from. But there are others who are much more dedicated in building their Akhira, their Jannah, their hereafter, their paradise. Those are the ones who should inspire us. May Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum. Wow. I think what, what you said was you made this point before you're always commenting on how people in poor countries are always praying. Sorry? You said you're always commenting on how people from poor countries are more prayerful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than these other things, mm -hmm. these other countries. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Hmm. That's a long uh, talk, but. What I can say is it's a good thing and again it's a bad thing. Yeah. Um, also God um sorry. I'm saying it's just like think about it. If we dedicate our time to uh, to prayer and just sit down and wait for food to come to us or wait for wealth to come to us, it's not gonna happen. But being prayerful doesn't mean you sit down and wait for something to happen. No, I'm just just saying. I mean, people shouldn't just sit down and pray. Pray and then make sure that you balance it out with uh, what puts food on the table. You know, we live in a 21st century where we have to take care of our families. We have to do this and that. So if you can be able to balance it all together, I think everything is going to work out perfectly. You get it? It's a good thing, but again, it's a bad thing. Uh, there are people who say that they managed to condition the continent of, of Africa to subject them, them with, uh, with all these uh, religious books so that they can just be on that level of not, uh, of not uh, having success in, the, in their economy or whatnot. If you look at it, carefully you might want to agree with such those people you get it because if you look at let's say for example if you look at my country Kenya there's a lot of pastors who are just coming out who are even much worse than uh, than 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 just a common one or, com or a common individual because he takes from the from the people and he, he preaches about success instead of preaching about love peace and all these type of things you get it so i mean all that someone takes from you and then in return it tells you like you're gonna get blessings that's where the problem comes you get it we should be in a position to be able to be spiritual uh, pray to god but at the same time let's be able to take care of our family or go out there and work people have People, people are, are, they have, they have forgotten that they are not supposed to go there and work. It's like they have given all to to prayer, and they say, okay, let's just pray. Things are gonna work out. Things are gonna work. Of course, they're gonna work out if you go out there and uh, make try to make the the ends meet, which I feel. Uh, Africa has has a lot of potential. Africa is not a poor continent, to be honest. It's a very rich continent, very rich of, of minerals, very rich of people, culture, and all those things that are there. It's just that um, we are at a stage whereby there's so much confusion, there's so much corruption, there's so much things that are pulling us down. You get it? We can't figure out one thing that is going to solve us to reach that level but again even if we figure out things you mm -hmm. do realize we signed somewhere yeah it's like we've got a contract That's... we came in with our rules yeah. so you're getting your independence but you have to do these things yeah i like in the beginning of the video when you started with uh, how disappointed he was with how 
other countries are portrayed. Mm, yeah. When you think about Nigeria, you're just thinking of maybe Boko Haram or the bad things that happen there. Whatever the case is, same as countries such as Yemen, mm -hmm. the media will always show us bad parts of Yemen. Yeah. But uh, there are good parts as well. The parts who are always not touching. Yeah, it's true. Remember, there was a guy we met at, uh, no, at some event. Of what? Yeah. And then he's from, he's from what? Um, Iraq or yeah, I think Syria? So. Syria. I don't know. Yeah. There is also, when you think about Saudi Arabia, we're thinking about human rights. Mm -hmm. That women are not enjoying some what, but actually, Saudi Arabia is a nice country. Mm -hmm. There's just so much going on, so many misperceptions, all because of media, as usual. Media is a really, really bad tool. Like, if there's a way we can just shun away from media, that would be the best thing ever. He also spoke about the situation in Zimbabwe. Yeah. But people are surviving. He's surviving. Yeah, he's surviving. Even though the. You just have to prepare yourself. Okay, maybe we won't have electricity for mm -hmm. this long. Let me do this. Let me prepare myself. People will still survive either way. Countries will try these so called big countries will try to destroy you but you will survive at the end oh, we still survive back in those days we didn't have electricity but we still survive so it's just it's, it's nothing to to ask the, the problem is what you talked about signing the treaty that's where the problem came in you know the thing is these other countries want us to live like them Yes, 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 exactly. Give us time to develop. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can't start acting. Zimbabwe can't start acting like the way America is acting. When did you say America got independent? 17, 17 something. 1776, I don't know. In that period of time. So that's already like 200 years. The gap that they give yeah, time for it. countries to develop. Yeah. In Africa, there's no country that has gone up to 70. 70 years of independence, so you can clearly see sure we are, about that? Yeah, 100% sure about that. You can clearly see that we are trying our level best to... I mean, we are still young uh, nation, you get it? We are trying to pull ourselves up, but again, there are some people who are out there who are pulling us down, you get it? But we... America can't just come and start saying that you guys are poor, you guys are what not, no. You guys are behind. Yeah, you guys are behind. You guys are what? You can't you say that. You have to have this, you have to have that. That's you, why things go wrong. You can never say that when you are ahead of us. Because then you start competing years. with a country that you can't compete with. Yeah. And they are the ones who are oppressing us. You say about uh, us being behind and whatnot, knowing that you guys are 200, ahead, 200 years ahead of us. And to top it all, you're still like kind of oppressing us not to reach that level because we can reach that level really quick you know that at our own pace yeah not theirs. yes at our own pace and i i believe that we can go there real quick the problem is that they don't want us to be at some level you get it so i mean but again since they just are just like you can want something good to happen to say your girlfriend mm -hmm. but you won't want something good to happen for maybe your friend's girlfriend mm -hmm. you just want the achievement Yes. success to for you guys i like how he said you would rather visit these countries than go to canada than go to these States. high higher countries but do you think we are to blame at some point because you see they okay you can see it's a choice nowadays there's the media uh, a lot of kids are being uh, conditioned or being subjected to watch this western whatever and they want to live like them they feel like they're so much ahead of us and we want to be like maybe uh, kim kardashian or what or whatsoever when you think of traveling it. what comes to mind first europe if not europe then um america mm -hmm. it's all these those countries mm -hmm. you as africans why not visit these countries around you yeah go to zimbabwe go to gambia go but I know where the problem comes in, Mimi. Where? The problem comes in that if I want to come to Gambia, I have to carry my passport. I have, you see, why, why would all these 
bill why can't we have just a pass for for yeah, every country you get it it would be much easier for us so imagine you thinking of like yeah, i want to go to gambia i know it shouldn't be an excuse but i know you're making that it, one. it should not be an excuse but, what i'm saying is but what when I'm you saying, think of education make your countries rich african countries rich mm -hmm. okay fine i don't want school in zambia let me go to zimbabwe Zimbabwe was one of the places with the best education. Yeah. Everyone knew that Kenya has actually good universities. Mm -hmm. People know that. But the, the the I'm really praying one day we have just what I'm saying is see the beauty in African countries. Yeah, Even if we don't have one passport right now, we can still go to these countries and learn about them. Yeah, sure. We can still go there. Because people are acting like they can't even go to Zimbabwe. They'll die. No, you won't. They have a fear of... Even even our own African people, they look down upon our fellow Africans. That's where the problem comes in. You get it. I can't go to Zimbabwe. Those guys are... I can't go to Nigeria. Those guys are con men. I can't go to South Africa. Those guys, there's xenophobia there that is happening. You get well, it. xenophobia is one thing to fear, but yeah, that shouldn't it. hinder you from traveling there. No, I mean, um, yeah, it shouldn't hinder you, but we are. Why? Why is that happening? Why? Why? Why are they having that xenophobia thing? Why? Why would I start hitting on a, on my fellow African person? Why? I mean, but all this. When the Western thing. investor comes in, you're happy. Yeah, you get it. We give we give him the half a hand. Instead of giving our own people a half hand, we Africans we should really understand that when we go outside Africa, try to go find jobs out there, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. They they favor their people fast. That's true, yeah. They favor their people fast, and then you next. But I've seen many African countries. They tend to favor the Western people. They tend to favor people who look different. That's why we go wrong. That's why we go wrong. I mean, it's really, really bad. Anyway, guys, this is really good. Let's not look down upon Nigerian people or whatnot. African people, you mean? Yeah. Any country out there that is African related, you get it. Or other parts of the world. Even other parts of the world. I mean, if we're all united, man, we can make good stuff. I mean, can do a lot of things. Anyway, guys, if you feel like we reacted to this video in a better way, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to go down in our comment section and tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction and what you feel about Mufti Menk on this video of what is what is it about Nigeria, West Africa. Just let us know in the comment section below and we're going to uh, talk to you guys, respond and whatnot. And also, if you have your own opinion about Africa, I know probably most of the people are watching us are from other continents just let us know what do you think about africa have you ever been to africa what's your first um impression about african people just let us know this uh, on the on the on the comment section below we will be we'll be really happy to see your comments the most important thing is don't forget to subscribe to our channel the more you keep on subscribing the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better better content and last but not the least we're going to see you in the next video and peace out